A lot of what we cover here on the Out of Spec podcast is EV related, car related, but I've got to say I'm a big fan of trains and automobiles and buses and public transport, not so much planes, but I think that every way that we get around can be electrified. Of course, those scooters around town are a bit scary when you see kids just ripping it down the street with no helmet, but the e-mobility space is far bigger than EVs is what I'm trying to say. So today we're going to talk about it. Welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast. I'm your host, Francie, and I'm joined by our good friend from Out of Spec, Jordan. Welcome back to the podcast. How you been doing? Great, Francie. Howdy. How is the South? I'm doing well up here in the North. It is a nice 69 degrees outside. And uh, yeah, really in, intrigued by the space of micromobility, especially now that it's all becoming electrified. Because, you know, 40 years ago, it was like, okay, bicycles. Um, but now we have, well, even when we were kids, there was like kick scooters, but now they're starting to be electrified in a usable fashion. Mm-hmm. And like you said, for kind of that first and last mile concept, or for some people within the city, their entire mile-ish miles of commuting. Um, it's really useful in Lime and Bird and like all these names that we know are using these electric scooters. And so it's interesting when other bigger manufacturers get into that game, which I'm guessing is what we're talking about today. Yeah, I'd love to talk about that. But before we get into that, you made me remember how my grandmother growing up, she had those the little like shrunken car that she would plug into the wall. It was battery powered that us as little bitty babes could get in and drive around. And that was kind of like my first experience with an electrified, you know, piece of mobilization. But yeah, there's a lot of creative ways to go about it. And recently you went on a trip, you got to go out and join Honda and check out their Moto Compacto. So uh, yeah, start off by telling me like, why did Honda invite people like you uh, out to see this? And then kind of, yeah, what was your impression going into the situation? It was pretty cool, um, partially because it was seeing Honda's actual U.S. headquarters, which is in, uh, I think, Torrance, California. Yeah, in the L.A. area. Um, and so seeing the Honda Acura, you know, facilities and various cars underneath hidden sheets, and I was like, hmm, what's under there? Um, but I wasn't there for a car, like you mentioned. And we, we do a lot of these events. Um, you know, in the future here, we can talk about what I just did in France with the Volkswagen ID7 once that embargo lifts. Um, and there, there's a lot, those are common. It's, it's common for man, auto manufacturers to bring folks like us, journalists, out to kind of review the car, see what can be seen about it, experience it, write or record about it, um, and give them feedback even. So that's not abnormal. But what's interesting about this one is it wasn't just car outlets. I met some people from lifestyle like magazines and and car magazines and micromobility magazines. It's kind of this like juxtaposition of all of those things together. And that was kind of fun, first of all, um, just to see that they're not just marketing this as like, oh, you like EVs? You might like our little electric scooter. Um, And maybe also it's like, well, they didn't want to bring all EV journalists because they knew we would just like criticize them for, hey, where's the, your where's your EVs? Look at all these other companies with their EVs. So yes, as you said, the the newest, well, currently kind of only EV on sale from Honda in the U.S. is a scooter, um, but it's freaking cool. And so got to go out and check that out in California. And yeah, it's interesting how they pitched it kind of as that first and or last mile transportation partially to be used tangentially with your existing EV, maybe car, doesn't have to be an EV. And maybe if you don't have an EV, this could be a little step towards having some of your mileage electrified. Right. So like you said, Honda doesn't have a very big footprint in EV space. I mean, they are well known as kind of a reliable car maker, at least anecdotally growing up, like my brother had a Honda Pilot that literally only was finally run into the ground when someone rammed into it when it was parked on the street. But otherwise, that thing could run like tens of thousands of miles with the check engine light on, like really (laughs) great cars. But yeah, they really haven't moved into the EV space. And there is like with them and Toyota, too, it's kind of like, when are y'all going to come along and really join this game? But they're making it in a little bit as it's also cute because it's coupled with the Honda Prologue, but the Moto Compacto, as you said, I mean, it was something from Honda before, like in the past, but now it's revamped in the new age. But a little bit about the Honda Prologue, just in case folks want to know what that first EV will be like, of course, from Honda. Um, 
we covered this in a podcast a while ago, but, you know, they expected to get the EPA range rating of 300 miles on a full charge. It's, you know, DCFC, it'll be starting MSRP just under 50K. And yeah, first delivery is set for 2024. In terms of the battery, um, an 85 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack. So we will see what comes from Honda. Like you said, this isn't out yet. We're waiting, but you came across the Moto Compacto, and you have a video about that too, which I'll get pulled up in a, in a second. But I do like this emphasis that you don't have to be an EV driver to incorporate other kinds of e-mobility into your life, right? You can go small scale, you can have the motorcycle, the scooter, whether you're renting it on the side of the street or buying it for yourself. So tell me a little bit how Honda is marketing this to folks. You kind of dipped into that a little bit, but how do you think they'll be successful here with the Moto Compacto or will they? Yeah, so it's interesting because this is not the first time Honda has done this. Uh, in the early 80s, for precisely three years, they had a car in Japan called the Honda City Car Turbo 2. Small, cool, little, you might even say ha hot hatchback, lukewarm hatchback. Um, super cool, super retro, and they never came to the U.S. But a factory option with that car was what was called the Moto, the Moto Compo. So it was a small, kind of, sort of foldable scooter type thing a 49 cc scooter a lot of us are familiar with those um, a lot of people use them on transport around college campuses i did when i was in college um i think i actually had a honda yeah so it's it's pretty cool not not uh new in that regards but this thing is really cool for our visual watchers um if you're if you're on the audio we also have youtube stream of this and francie's pulled up a photo of the super cute adorable honda city 2 and the the moto compo with it so that was a really cool solution. It folded up a little bit, really just foot pegs and handlebars and seat folded together. It was still fairly bulky, but still smaller than most of the other scooters of that day. Uh, it weighed just over 100 pounds, so not easy to pull in and out of your trunk. And when you look at the size of that tiny Japanese car, that takes up like the entire trunk. <laughs> it's not really, um, yeah. It, it, you're sacrificing all your storage space to have this little thing. But it was a really cool idea, if you ask me and a lot of other people. That being said, not very successful, apparently. I mean, I would guess low sales is the only reason they did that from literally 1981 to 1983. Mm. So, but because they had done that prior, this Moto Compacto project came up. And it actually was what was called, I think, a PPP, Personal Passion Project, which is something within Honda that they promote their employees to do. They want their employees to come up with cool ideas and they literally pay them to have crazy wild ideas and have competitions about whose idea is the craziest or the funniest. And mm -hmm. this one was one of those ideas that afterwards they were like, wait, what if we actually made this <laughs> and brought back that like feeling of the heritage of the eighties um, and make it a perfect companion with your EV or any other car. But you know, really they're marketing it to, EV minded people. So they did show it alongside the prologue, but a big miss in my opinion is that this is not perfectly suited for the prologue. That mm. and but by, by that I mean like the under trunk storage could have been like molded to this or even like close enough. Um, or even there's no frunk in the prologue. And like what if they had just made a little bit of a space for a small slim frunk like we see on the EGMP cars like the Kia EV6 and such, where you had just a moto compacto sized pocket. That would be so cool. Um, they don't. That's kind of a miss, but I understand these were completely separately developed products and the prologue is actually, you know, developed kind of with GM. So there's that whole thing too. Whereas this is all in-house designed, or they say born in California, raised in Ohio is how they described it. So it's all U S design developed, um, little scooter thing. And I think that's pretty cool. We have this huge landscape, like I said, of small scooters. Some of them really suck. Some of them are like cheap knockoff things and just, I mean, they do the trick, but on the other hand, not so well, this one has a lot of, well done engineering, Honda engineering, Honda build quality. So I think it will be actually a pretty good, uh, yeah, a, a good piece of tech and not necessarily class leading specs, but I'm hoping that shows people that you don't necessarily need to just crunch out the numbers on paper. It's, it's really what's the whole package deal. 
That's true. Yeah, it would have been cool if it was really like wrapped up together with the prologue, but I see why that might just not have been an option um, and so that it can be applicable other places. But that kind of really holistic approach is something that's really cool to see from other e auto manufacturers, but EV makers who are thinking really big picture. So um, just a couple questions I had. So in terms of buying this how much does it cost and then also do you know anything about the battery and how you charge it i know it's small scale but i'm still curious yeah so it is 995 dollars but as some people have pointed out it is a part number from honda and a lot of dealerships sell parts from honda with their included dealer markdown which is ironic because usually we think of dealers with mark up, but like a lot of times service parts, they want you to buy it through your, de their, your dealer. So they'll give you like a 5% discount or something. Hmm. So people have seen these listed on dealer service part websites for like 800 something dollars, maybe high oh. hundreds. I'm not sure, but it's still a discount. Um, even at a thousand, I think it's a fine deal. Um, and yeah, when I said not class leading specs, it's, it's not the fastest thing. The top speed is 15 miles an hour. It'll only do 12 miles on a charge. Um, it's a 6.8 amp hour battery. Don't actually know the voltage. It could be 24 or 36 volts. Not sure on that. Um, and it does charge from a household outlet. Or if you have an EV with a charging outlet, it'll charge from that. I don't know if the Prologue does. Um, again, that'd be a huge miss if it couldn't charge off your own Prologue. Because, again, this is such a small battery. So for this to full charge off your car, it would not do anything negative really to your car so mm -hmm. i think any i'm hoping more and more evs have this like built in like oh you want to charge your micro mobility last mile situation go ahead make it easy um so this charges in 3.5 hours from a household outlet so not bad um not amazing you know small battery and it's it's not even necessarily an onboard charger you do have to carry that separately although mm -hmm. there's a little storage space in the scooter itself as long as it's unfolded while it's folded the storage space is gone so there, there's a little bit of things they may have they, they could have maybe done a slightly bit better with packaging but maybe they did the best they could with the extremely slim engineering that they're trying to accomplish and make it only 40 pounds and very very small compared to the original moto compo hmm. yeah it seems like a, a more of a fun project from honda that you got to check out kind of see in general where they're going with this of course it's not like a large scale big step into the ev space but like i said it's fun to see small projects happen in any part of the mobility space in general in terms of e-mobility so i'm glad you got to go check it out um i would wonder if any of our viewers would be interested in a moto compacto if they're i feel like it's something you could add to your collection of cool e-mobility that you have you know in your garage if you're lucky enough but uh, I'm not sure if I would get one. I think I might opt for something a bit more uh, utilitarian before going <laughs> for that. <laughs> yeah, it is interesting. I, I like the the point that they made sure to mention very early on in their like kind of keynote presentation was, look at the huge blank sides of this thing. It's meant to be like the back of your computer. You know, you you walk around a college campus and see Mac MacBooks with stickers all over the back, and it's like, oh. look, it's a blank canvas to like dress up yourself. And I was like, well, maybe here at out of spec, like headquarters, we should have just have a fleet of these with racing numbers on the side. And we race to lunch or whatever. And I, I don't know, pipe, pipe dream maybe, but Kyle's express interest. So we'll see, but you're right. It's not super utilitarian, but it is a fun toy that can be actually very useful depending on your situation. I guess we can think about our cars that way as well, although they're usually very functional. But when you're lucky enough, you can think about them as toys and treat them as such something to improve your lifestyle. So I think we sh should keep talking about the micro e-mobility space. As you said, I think it's a big picture. Not everyone one has the means to get a large EV and incorporate electric into their lives that way. But also there are smaller trips we can take with smaller vehicles and interested to get you on soon again to talk about your trip to France when you're able to do that. Um, it's really cool that you're able to travel to these events and then come update us. So let us know in the comments if anyone has uh, any questions about Honda or the Moto Compacto or Jordan's experience. Of course, check out the video, which will be linked in the description and let us know what you think. Yeah. Thanks for joining us on the Out of Spec podcast. Thank you, Jordan. Yeah, I'm thrilled. Uh, I, I'm really curious, maybe you are too, to see which EV this fits in the best. You'd wish it was the Honda <laughs> one, obviously, but like, I wonder if there's an EV out there, and there's so many now, that just has like a perfect size space for this little rectangle to slip in. 
We'll That's see. Let point. us know in the comments if you have any ideas. Yes, which crevice will be the perfect one for the Moto Compacto? Let us know in the comments. And we will see you next time on the Out of Spec Podcast. <laughs>